Well, I'd certainly be interested to know where you've got your money tonight. Uh, <laughs> if it's on Austria, you may be uh, sitting on the edge of your seat because Landerting is having a right old crack at getting away from the rest of the field. Christoph Suman uh, on the last leg for Austria, and it looks as though he's going to be the first out of the stadium. Bit of a surprise for Suman, back after a week off. Uh, didn't want to race in Oberhof because he's never had any good results there. He has done well here in Rupolding, and he's one of those whose who ski speed generally is his trump card. Well, Landa Tinger is trying desperately to give him some advantage on the track. It's going to be, what, four seconds, maybe five. That's a, an amazing turn of pace from Landa Tinger. Is it significant, or does it just allow Suman to play the first uh, four, five hundred metres at his will? I think, oh, quite honestly, he's going to be hauled in within uh, 300 metres. Yeah, highly likely, but uh, you can't take anything away from Lannertinger. He's uh, done an impressive job to here tonight. Now it's the veteran in the Austrian team who takes the reins. He leads the way. 54.49, the uh, leading time at the moment. Remember the winning time last year, 1.17.26. And that, of course, was the World Championship uh, relay that Norway claimed the title in. Ukraine are hanging on. They were 10 behind at the start of this last lap, now over 20 seconds, in fact, to over 30 seconds. So they've lost a lot of time with Sednev on that last two and a half kilometers. Artem Prima is the man who's got to try and close the gap down. Is it between the leading four? Or the, can Ukraine get in there? Well, that's the great thing with biathlon, isn't it? You would say it's only between the top four, but you can't write Russia off with Anton Shapulin. Should any of these, and this is where the pressure is at the sharp end, one of them you would expect is going to have a problem on the range. So it could still be open for the Russians at 53 seconds behind. <laughs> well, oh, the more two, than 53. The, the two greatest biathletes on the planet at the moment have got to make uh, drastic mistakes to let Russia back into this one because we've got Svensson for Norway and, uh, of course, for France, Martin for Carter. Eric Lesser will fancy his chances of holding his own. Christoph Suman, I think, is going to have to try and psych the others out, Mike, because surely after after a long period, he hasn't raced since Pakuka, surely after all that time, he's uh, he's not quite race fit. You would, he, had, he didn't show us uh, his old form before Christmas, certainly in Oberhof. He did look at, what was it, some 25, 30 seconds off his best. Well, Lesser is the lightest of the uh, leading athletes, and the, the soft conditions might suit him if it comes to a, a sprint finish. Uh, technically, on the deep snow, Mike, do you think anyone has an advantage? I do like the way uh, at the back of this group, uh, Martin Fouchade, he's, he's so easy he's a big guy he's a heavy guy but he, he tends to try and float across the surface and, and we've seen how devastatingly good he is in the closing stages here in Rupolding. He won most of his titles last year with uh, a final lap burst that no one could get anywhere near matching. Just moving up on the outside Martin Foucault he'll draw alongside Svensson uh, Lesser being pushed down into fourth place that was a lot of energy exerted for one position I'm sure he has his reasons. Sweden, of course, had dropped down there with Ericsson trying to stay with the pace and, and struggling a little on the range. Just uh, seeing any movers. Uh, Americans now down in 17th, uh, having been around a penalty loop twice. Slovenia, still well, two, in fact, two minutes, four after the the uh, stand shoot they're really almost out of it and further down uh, China who've just come back into it uh, having done four penalty loops and sadly for the British team Marcel Laponder has uh, just picked up a penalty loop in the stand position 754 behind Ukraine, well, it was 31 seconds behind. Artem Prima, he's, uh, he's pushing hard. He knows he has to if there's a chance of uh, pressurizing the leaders. But he's not making an impression at the moment. It was 31.4. He must have lost, what, two or three seconds? Oh, 33.6. So, yeah, two seconds. And a lonely race there. Here comes Sweden. 
Freddie Lindstrom. That's a shame. Uh, it would have been nice to see Lindstrom starting within 30 seconds, uh, maybe alongside the Ukrainians. But he's got good company with Anton Shapulin. And should that leading group of four make mistakes, then uh, these two will pounce. What's, what's uh, surprising me, Lindstrom started seven seconds behind Shapulin. He's caught him so quickly. And in fact, Shapulin being dragged on. I wonder if the Russians have maybe made some little mistake in the waxing today. Well, Foucault's got his power back, that's for sure. No, I'm, I'm absolutely convinced the Russians have made uh, a mistake. It could be it could be the wax, Mike. It could be the base they've selected. Um, maybe, maybe they weren't predicting this snowfall to start so early. Uh, I can tell you that the snow's due to fall for the next four days. <laughs> By the time we finish here on Sunday evening, there could be another metre or two of fresh snow around, which uh, is great news for the tourist board, not quite such good news for the guys who have to spend all night long preparing the tracks. Oh, that's good news, and, and great news as well. This is the venue that the British and the British Army Championships come to in, what, just two weeks' time. Mark Goodson organises that. Well, the last leg, and uh, we're coming in for the prone shoot with the three leaders absolutely side by side. Austria, France, and Norway, and Germany spinning out. A man who should know these tracks better than that, Eric Lesser. Well, he's not lost a lot of time. It was a quick recovery from Lesser, and I just wonder how that's going to push the pulse up. He needs to calm it, just uh, ignore the fact that he's taken a tumble difficult isn't it the frustration as you say 40,000 people watching him come down that hill yeah will, will Lesser be... get the targets there's going to be a big cheer if he does he's very good he doesn't often get put off but that surely is going to make a slight difference I would say what one spare Svensson's closest to the targets but it doesn't mean he's going to hit all of them France now with Martin Foucault, a chance to get just a few valuable seconds clear. Eric Lesser's got four out of four, five out of five, last in, first out, brilliant shooting from Eric Lesser. And uh, that certainly could help turn things around with just one shoot remaining. The Austrians and Suman, oh, Suman thought he had it, but uh, that's going to mean a 20-second gap at least. And Austria could have lost their chance. Svensson with a little bit of trouble, uh, not sure what's going on with his carrying harness. Did he, I think he was shouting there. He, was there an issue? Yeah, I think there might be an issue with his rifle. Uh, not quite sure what it is. We might get a replay. Look at this. If, out of all of these uh, athletes in this front group, you would never say that Schumann would miss on the prone. He was, last season, 96% hit rate. Well, that's uh, bad news for Austria, but they still have another chance because the last shoot still remains. Martin Foucault leading the way out of the stadium. He's the man likely to set the pace on the penultimate lap. Germany surviving despite that fall from Eric Lesser. And Emil Hegler Svensson with seemingly with a problem, but we're not sure what it is quite yet. Prima, he's almost moving his head off the rifle before he squeezes the trigger. The Ukrainian. Anton Shapulin, one spare, really Russia versus Sweden at this stage. The Ukrainians are away, but uh, they've lost uh, a lot of the advantage that they had over Russia and Sweden. So a good race going on for the minor places. And uh, as you can see, only, what is it, five or six seconds separating five, six and seven? Not even that, four. Now Suman uh, at 18.9 seconds behind, he's on his own. He's going to find that a tougher race than when he was skiing in the group. This is the sort of performance we expect from Martin Foucault. It's been a good performance by the French. The two Foucault brothers, Beatrix and Berf, Germany. Can't think of anyone in Germany who's slipped up so far. Only three spare rounds for the Germans. Yeah, that's a high standard. Germany and France, the same shooting scores at the moment. Norway with just five misses, but they're fast enough to make up for those sort of mistakes. Austria having uh, been up with the leaders on the last lap are now chasing. They've got Team 23, that's the Romanians, who've been lapped uh, at least once behind them. These are the three men who know that a perfect performance 
on the range for the last shoot could mean they take the top prize tonight. Suman looks to be closing, Mike, from 18. He certainly cut the gap to less than, uh, less than 12 seconds. That's very impressive, eh? and he's uh, tucking in behind as well. I think Eric Lesser from that fall, it's a lesson to any up and coming by athletes that you mustn't let anything put you off. To take a head plant into the snow, at home, just coming into the range, it normally tenses you up. You go into a panic state, but <laughs> he kept calm and hit five out of five well, so what he's, fast. What he's got to do is negotiate that turn twice. Uh, this uh, final, this penultimate time for the standing shoot, absolutely crucial. But if those three teams say lock side by side, that corner is going to be even harder to negotiate. Good fight between Ukraine, Russia and Sweden. And an equally tight one between these three teams. Martin Foucault now dictating the pace. And we see that traditional little dancing burst that he puts in. Uh, this style really started by uh, Rafael Poiret. Yes, it was. And Poiret's here. Uh, he's coaching the Belarus. And not many other athletes uh, adopt this little dancing move. It uses a, a lot of energy. Lesser just dropping off the pace by a couple of meters. But uh, maybe not too fast. I think that's the Romanian team there, so they're being lapped by uh, the Austrian team now. So here we go, the crucial turn. What line will Foucault take? He stays tight. Svensson tries to stay even tighter, and Eric Lesser drifts wide once again, but this time safely round. I think he was sensible on the top, the crest of that hill. He, he didn't go with it. He didn't want to push himself so hard over the top. So Lesser, for me, the intelligent entry into the range. Although Martin Foucault never ever even looks out of breath, he must be. Final shoot, the final shoot, and the fact that Germany are still in this one means we have more noise in the stadium than we had uh, in any stadium so far this year. Germany are going to be in lane number three, it's Martin Foucault, I think the hot shot of this group uh, in lane one. Svensson, former overall World Cup winner, Olympic champion, world champion, and then, of course, Christoph Suman, who needs to make up for those misses in the pro. Suman has skied so fast to get back up with the leaders. Svensson's very slow to get the first shot away. Germany have cleared four already. France have cleared four. And they go down. The first 15 targets. No! Svensson misses one, so he's going to have a chase on his hands. France are clear. Germany are clear. Austria are clear with Suman. And Svensson misses again. And that could be Norway's chance. The team that lead the World Cup standings in the relays. And oh. if Svensson misses one more, he's on the penalty loop. He knows that better than anyone else, and he avoids it. But well. the damage surely is done. 15 seconds, two and a half kilometers to make it up. Oh. Well, it needs to be the ski race of his life now. If he wants to put Norway on the podium, yeah. throw, throwing the glasses off, yeah, that's extra weight. That's 50 <laughs> grams gone. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he's, he's going to give this one a go, Mike. 